Have you ever wondered what it really takes to make a delicious burger like this? I mean, yeah, the beef comes from a cow, but that needs space to graze. And the bun is made of wheat, which grows in wide open fields. And the salad, that's grown in a dedicated farm. Before they all come together and meet their destiny, my mouth, all that food growing space adds up. So it begs the question, how much space does each of us need to feed ourselves for a whole year? What's the food footprint of the average person? And hold on to your hats, because it is about to get mathsy in here. But first, let's just see where. Okay, on average, each human on the planet eats nearly two kilograms of food every day. Now, of course, this varies across the world, with the Japanese eating just over 1.6 kilograms and people from the US polishing off nearly three kilograms. But I'm gonna have to deal with a lot of averages in this video, and the average overall daily food consumption is around two kilos. Now, that two kilos is made up of all the basic food groups, meat, grains, veggies, and dairy, as well as our daily indulgences of sugar and alcohol. Over a whole year, Year, we can get through an astounding amount of stuff. We'll drink around 90 litres of milk, consume nearly 64 kilos of potatoes, and those occasional sweet treats, they add up to 29 kilos of sugar a year. That is roughly the weight of a nine-year-old. All of the food that goes down our collective hatches has to be grown or raised on the land. So how much space does it actually need? Well, when working it all out, it's important to take note of the yield of each particular foodstuff. That's basically how much produce you get out of each patch of land. And it can vary massively depending on what you're growing and how good you are at growing it and where in the world you're doing your growing. An example, when it comes to fulfilling our sugar cravings, we can either use sugar cane or sugar beet. Now, if you opt for sugar cane, a square meter of growing space will give you 65 grams of sugar. The same area growing sugar beet will produce one kilo of the sweet stuff. The yield from sugar beet is more than 15 times greater than sugar cane. In the calculations coming up, I have taken some of the highest yielding crops we use to fulfill our daily diet. So what I'm giving you is our minimum food footprint. That in itself is fraught with problems, but I'll come back to that in a minute. All right, are we ready to dive in? I can hear that burger calling me, give it back. Here we go. To make the big numbers easier to visualize, I'm going to talk in that universal measure of area, the 15 square meter American parking space. Just run with it. Now, as ever, the atom symbol will give you the footnote number to check in the video description below if you want a reference or to dig deeper. The average person eats around 175 eggs a year. A hen can lay twice that amount. So one hen will do for two people. Welfare specialists say she needs at least a square meter. So that makes for half a square meter per person. Milk comes from cows. We drink 90 liters of milk a year, but Daisy can produce nearly 8,000 liters a year, meaning one cow can serve 88 people. So dividing the 6,000 square meters that one cow needs by 88 gives an area equivalent to four and a half parking spaces. Unbelievably, beef also comes from cows. Who knew Daisy's boyfriend can feed 20 people with the roughly 200 kilograms per year of meat from his body. So each person is responsible for 300 square meters of his grazing area. And that's the same as 20 parking spaces. Pork products account for over 15 kilos of our annual eating, and one pig can provide for four people. So a quarter of their area totals just two and a half square meters. Chickens have a lot less meat on them, and it takes about 15 little cluckers to meet our annual poultry needs. These guys together need an area equivalent to one parking space. Next up, seafood. This is a tricky one. An averaged version of us eats nearly 20 kilos of it over the year, but yields vary massively. If you fancy prawns, then that would take a water area of over 3,000 square meters. But if you could settle for the grass carp, the most commonly farmed fish, then a water area of just three quarters of a square meter would suffice. Now, because I'm calculating minimum food footprint, we're gonna go for grass carp, whatever that tastes like. Fishy, I guess. We eat seven kilos of pulses like lentils and beans. It's an allotment favorite because the yield of beans is quite high. You only need one and a quarter parking spaces to meet your pulse quota. 
we've already talked about sugar. Taking beet as the highest yielding sugar crop, you'd need nearly two parking spaces worth to satisfy your sweet tooth over the year. Next up is oils. Among your sunflowers and your olives and your ground nuts, one of the highest yielding plant oils is coconut. But you'd still need five parking spaces of coconut trees to make the 19 kilos of oil that we consume each year. Anyone else feeling a bit greasy? While we're on liquids, our annual alcohol consumption averages roughly 40 litres per year. The space you need depends on your tipple of choice. Making this much wine takes five parking spaces worth of vineyards, roughly two square metres per bottle. Clear spirits like vodka are made from a mash of grain, and it would take only three parking spaces of wheat to make enough for the year. So for our minimum alcohol footprint, we're going to stick to the hard stuff. Grains like rice, wheat and maize make up more than 20% of our diets and in total you need to dedicate an area of 195 square metres, that's equivalent to 13 parking spaces to these cereals. To grow the 64 kilos of potatoes and other starchy veg that we need in a year, you'd need just one extra parking space. Potatoes for the win! Yields of other veg vary as well. If you are happy to only eat tomatoes, which I should add would not be a good plan, then the area needed to grow 136 kilos of them for the year is just two and a half parking spaces. And finally, fruit. Bananas are some of the most widely consumed fruits in the world. So if your annual fruit quota was made up of entirely bananas, you'd need just one parking space of plantation. We got there. So in total, your personal homestead adds up to just over 820 square metres. That's equivalent to a respectable car park of 55 parking spaces. Multiply this by the seven and a half billion people currently on the planet, and you need an area at least the size of the Amazon rainforest, or 23 times the size of the UK, to meet all of our nutritional needs. Interestingly, about half of that is crops. The other half's animals, although Daisy and her boyfriend occupy more than 90% of the animal half. Now, these numbers are all well and good in theory, but in reality, there's a lot of assumptions and generalizations that mean you can't just turf over the nearest supermarket car park. You can't, for instance, just fence off an 88th of the space that a dairy cow needs in the hope that, like Schrodinger's cow, she'll occupy yours and your neighbour's gardens all at once. Yields also depend on economies of scale. The highest crop yields depend on large-scale commercial farming practices and vast processing facilities that simply aren't practical for the backyard gardener. And don't forget the problem of growing coconuts, bananas and rice in a potentially unsuitable climate, and the need to replenish and revitalise the soil, and the long time before certain plants reach productive maturity, and the food that needs to be grown to feed Daisy and her boyfriend, and yes, this is a very rough, conservative estimate, but it does at least give an idea of the demand that our eating habits are putting on the land. With nearly half of that required land dedicated to pastoral farming, you might wonder if it would be better to ditch the animal products altogether. Or to find out what would happen if the whole world turned vegan overnight, check out Maddie's video over on Earth Unplugged. But now, I have a burger to eat. What do you mean you've eaten it, Jack? Well, if you enjoyed this, uh, please be sure to like, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload more Earth Lab videos. Right, Jack, come here.